My goal in this course is to teach you everything you need to know so that when you set foot into calculus one day that you'll be prepared and need to know all the things you need to do to do well in that class. Now, up to this point, the only assumption that I've made is that you know a little bit about algebra. I have a few algebra uh, videos on the market that are excellent primers for everything you're going to need to know with regard to algebra. And what you'll find is typically what happens is you'll go through algebra in school and then one day you'll take calculus and there's kind of this gap of knowledge that needs to happen in there. And um, I'm going to cover that gap here. Usually that class is covered by a course in either pre-calculus or trigonometry. Either course really will get you, I think, pretty much ready for calculus. My goal is to, to, to teach you the content of that course so that you're ready to go when you get into class. So let's begin. We're going to start talking about something called complex numbers. So I'm just going to write that on the board. Um, complex numbers are uh, complex numbers give people a hard time a lot of times. And I think that if I had to pick one name in math that someone made up for some concept and it just totally confused people for centuries afterwards, it'd be this one. Forget about the name. Complex has nothing to do with it. Okay. Um, another word for these things you'll hear and uh, we'll talk about is imaginary numbers. That, that's, even, that's almost even worse. Um, imaginary makes you think that it doesn't even exist. It's totally useless. I know you may have heard these terms before. My goal is to show you what they are. Okay. Recall for a minute the following. Recall that if we had something like um, x squared is equal to 5, and when I say recall, I just mean think back to algebra, how would you solve an equation like that? Well, in order to get rid of the square term, what you need to do is, is take a square root of both sides. So what you would have is square root of x squared equals square root of 5, right? But notice that every time you do something like this, you'll need to put a plus or a minus in front of your square root. And that's just something that you should have just picked up from algebra. So what you will have is x is equal to plus or minus um, the square root of 5. Okay? Or you know, maybe a, a different example might be um, you know, if you had x squared is equal to 25. Okay? x would be plus or minus 5. Okay? That means there's two solutions to this equation. One of them is positive 5, one of them is negative 5. The reason is you can take positive 5 and put it in here. Positive 5 times positive 5 will give you 25. You can also take negative 5 and you can put it in there. And uh, negative 5 times negative 5, again, will give you positive 25. All of this has really not much to do with complex numbers, but it, it's, a, it's a good intro for what we're going to need. Okay. So let's say that we're working with the problem kind of like this. x squared is equal to 25. Okay. What if you had oh, I don't know, just on the test or something, x squared is equal to negative 25. Okay. How would you solve a problem like that? Well, you might be tempted to put a square root over this and a square root over this and just kind of leave, like, leave it like that circled on your paper. Well, that's not going to cut it. Okay, that's not correct. Let's just see what, what would happen if we just said x is equal to plus or minus 5 here. Let's just pretend that we just assumed this was the answer. Um, we already said that 5 times 5 is positive 25, so positive 5 is not a solution to this at all because we're looking for x squared is equal to negative 25. Let's, take, let's say we take negative 5. We put that in here. Negative 5 times negative 5, again, gives us positive 25. So it looks on the surface that there's no number that you can multiply by itself, either positive or negative. There's, it looks like on the surface there's no number that I can multiply by itself to give me negative 25. And that looks like a total showstopper. And um, in fact, there is a number, there are a set of numbers that will satisfy this equation. Okay? They're called imaginary numbers. Okay? Let me write something down on the board and then uh, we'll talk about it and we'll understand why it's, why it's useful. The answer to this problem, if you take the square root of this side and the square root of this side, we get x squared equals plus or minus, because we always have to have a plus or a minus anytime we put a square root around something, okay? What you're going to have is, you go ahead and you take the square root of whatever it is that's actually under here, neglecting this negative sign altogether, so square root of 25 is 5, okay? But then you put i after it, okay? The answer to this uh, equation, let me get rid of this right here, x is equal to plus or minus 5i, okay? 
what the heck does that mean? I is not a variable. I is not, um, you know, not something that you can vary. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a constant. It's something that mathematicians made up in order to make this work out, okay? So what you do is, I mean, the short, the short and sweet of it is, anytime you have the square root of a negative number, anytime you take the square root of the number, forgetting the fact that it's negative, you put that down, plus or minus, and then you just stick an I at the end of it because it's negative here, okay? That's what you do. Now, one more crucial definition in order to make this work out, and I'll show you why. I just told you this was the answer, and I did not tell you why. Mathematicians have defined I to be, by definition, the square root of negative 1. By definition. You know, you can't think of a real number that's, gonna, that's going to, um, to actually be the square root of negative 1. I mean, there is no number you can pick that'll fit that. So they made up a new number, and that number they made up really isn't written as a number, it's written as this letter I. So this, by definition, is equal to this. This is very important. You need to remember this. This definition is very important, okay?